The following question reads that prenol is a naturally occurring organic molecule found in many fruits. It contains both an alkene and an alcohol functional group. So uh, there is an alkene, a double bond over here in this molecule, and an alcohol, an OH group in this molecule as well. Now part A of the question reads that prenol can be formed from the, by the reaction of G with NaOH. So complete the diagram to show the mechanism of the reaction between G and NaOH to form prenol, including all relevant charges, partial charges, lone pairs, and curly arrows. So what is G? Uh, G is this compound over here. The Cl is going to be substituted by OH. So that is what's going to happen in this reaction. So the reaction is with NaOH. Now the first thing you're going to notice is that this is a primary halogenoalkane. Primary halogenoalkanes, Cl is bonded to a carbon atom that is bonded to two hydrogens and on one side there's a carbon chain. So primary halogenoalkanes undergo SN2 mechanism which is that this bond is polar. Carbon has a partial positive charge, Cl has a partial negative charge. The OH minus one is the nucleophile, NaOH is going to produce that nucleophile and that OH minus one nucleophile is going to directly attack this positive carbon atom. From the opposite side, it's going to attack it and the electrons in this double bond over here, they're going to get repelled. So the OH is going to approach this positive carbon atom, it's going to be, it's a nucleophile, it's going to be attracted to the positive charge and it's going to come in with its electrons and the electrons over here are going to get repelled and the Cl will eventually get knocked out. So let's move to the next part, part B of the question, which is prenol reacts with steam to form a mixture of three isomers J, K and L uh, of molecular formula C5H12O2. When J is heated with excess acidified potassium dichromate 6, it forms an organic compound which shows no reaction with 2,4-D and pH. And you're being asked to draw the structure of J. Now the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to try and figure out what happens when prenol reacts with steam. So here are my two molecules of prenol that I've uh, copied from above. And I'm going to react it with water. What's going to happen when it reacts with water is that the double bond over here is going to react. On one side H would, would attach and on the other side OH would attach. So let's get rid of the double bond. The double bond would change into a single bond and on one side an H would attach and on the other side an OH would attach. That's the reaction of an alkene reacting with water. But the issue is that there could be another possibility that the H would attach on the right side and the OH would attach on the left side. So the other molecule that's possible is that the double bond would react. So that is gone. And the OH reacts on the left side and the H reacts on the right side. So these are going to be my two molecules. One of them would be my major product, which is going to be this one, because uh, it's actually this one. The H generally tends to, the Markovnikov's rule is that the H attaches to that carbon atom that is already bonded to more hydrogen. So this is bonded to one hydrogen. This carbon was not bonded to any of the hydrogens. It was, it was bonded to carbon chains. So the rule, Markovnikov's rule is H likes to bond with the carbon atom that is already bonded to more hydrogens. So this is your major product. This is your minor product, but both products are going to be formed. Now another thing about this question is that they had stated that the mixture has three isomers are going to be produced. We only have two structural formulas. So how come the third uh, isomer could be formed and that is because one of the carbon is chiral. So this molecule over here is going to be existing in two mirror images. It's going to be forming optical isomers and it's going to have two enantiomers. So this molecule would be counted as two. Uh, one, both of them would be mirror images of each other. They would have the same structural formula. Uh, so they would be optical isomers of each other and one molecule would be this. So in total, you will have a total of three isomers. Two of them are going to be stereo isomers. Now part I of the question reads, when J is heated with excess potassium dichromate 6, it forms an organic. So he's basically oxidizing it. So we're going to try and oxidize both our molecules. We don't know yet which one is J. So I'm not sure uh, whether J is this compound or it's this compound. So I'm going to try and oxidize it. Now, one thing you would notice is that this carbon over here, let me label this, this is a secondary alcohol. Secondary alcohols change into ketones. And this OH over here is a primary alcohol. Primary alcohols change into carboxylic acid. So let's, uh, we're going to oxidize that. And let me quickly correct myself. This OH over here is in fact a tertiary alcohol. Because if you look carefully, this OH is bonded to a carbon atom that is bonded on three sides with a carbon chain. So this one is a tertiary alcohol. This one is a primary alcohol because this carbon is bonded to two hydrogens and only one carbon chain is attached to it. So this one is a primary alcohol. Tertiary alcohols don't get oxidized. Primary alcohols get oxidized to carboxylic acids. 
So I've uh, redrawn this molecule. I'm trying to oxidize it. Uh, as you can see, I haven't touched this OH. It's a tertiary alcohol. Doesn't get oxidized. This one over here is the primary alcohol. So I'm going to change that carbon into a carboxylic acid. So let's make that into a carboxylic acid. It's going to be double bond O and OH. So that's one of my product for oxidation. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this uh, alcohol as well. And over here, you would notice that, uh, let's first figure out, this is a primary alcohol, though this one would change into a carboxylic acid when it gets oxidized. This one over here is a secondary alcohol, because if you look at the carbon atom, it's bonded to two carbon chains. So this one is a secondary alcohol, secondary alcohols change into ketones. So let's try and draw the structure of the oxidation. So here I've copied the molecule, nothing happens to the rest of the molecule. This OH carbon atom changes into a ketone, so let's change that into a ketone. And this primary alcohol changes into a carboxylic acid, so change that carbon into a carboxylic acid. It's going to be double bond O and OH. Now let's go back and see what the question was stating. That it stated that J, the product of J had no reaction with 2,4 DNPH, which 2,4 DNPH is used to identify aldehydes or ketones. So uh, the product. This one is a carboxylic acid, so no reaction with 2,4 DNPH. So this over here is not going to have any reaction with 2,4 DNPH. It's not a ketone, it's not an aldehyde, it's a carboxylic acid. This other one is going to react with 2,4 DNPH because there's a ketone group, acetyl bond O in the middle, carbon chain on both sides. So there's a acetyl bond O, it's a ketone, so it's going to give a positive result. Hence, uh, the molecule J that we are talking about, uh, the product of J had no reaction with 2,4 DNPH. That means that this molecule over here, let's highlight this, this molecule must have been J. And this other molecule is definitely the other K and L compounds. So the rest of the question now is that K and L are stereoisomers with molecular formula C5H12O2. So we've, we've already figured out, figured out what K and L are. K and L are stereoisomers. They're mirror images of each other because it's a chiral center in the carbon atom. This over here is K, this one is also L. Uh, the only difference is that they are mirror images of each other. So the first part of the question, uh, it states that K and L re both react with heated with uh, potassium dichromate 6 to form compound M. So we have uh, even formed the product of the oxidation of this molecule K and L. And we figured out that uh, there was a secondary alcohol and there was a, there was a primary alcohol, a ketone formed and a carboxylic acid formed. So this is, this is compound M. Uh, the next part of the question is, you're supposed to give the structural formula of K and L. So let's go back and have a look at K and L and figure out what the structural formula is going to be. So it's going to be, uh, there's a CH. So right over here, you can see a C with the H and it's two CH3 branches. So you can, you can write uh, it as CH3 twice. Then there's another CHOH. You can see over here, this is CH and OH. And then there is CH2OH. So we can write that. Let me rub this off. So it's CH2 and OH. So I've uh, written the condensed version of the formula and I'm going to copy it. So here I've uh, copied the formula of uh, the isomer KNL. And now you're being asked to find, uh, to type, uh, name the type of stereo isomer shown by KNL. Now they were forming mirror images, so that is optical isomers. Part four of the question is you give uh, you have to give the balanced equation to present uh, the reaction of K with acidified potassium dichromate six to form M. Use O to represent an atom of oxygen provide, uh, provided by the oxidizing agent. So we already know what the products are. We have already uh, done that. Uh, we know that this is uh, KNL and if getting oxidized to form this ketone and carboxylic acid. So we just need to write an equation for this reaction. So here's my balanced uh, equation, C5H12O2, that's K, reacting uh, to form C5H8O3. O it represents the oxidizing agent as this stated in the question. And uh, water would be produced because uh, hydrogens are being lost, so they're going to combine with the oxygen to form water. And I've balanced it. Part C of the question reads, that prenol contains an alkene functional group. Describe a chemical test to confirm the presence of an alkene functional group. Give the result of the test. Now, this is an easy test. It's bromination. So the test is you're going to add bromine. And the red brown bromine is going to decolorize because it's going to react with the alkene functional group. 
the double bonds are going to the bromines are going to get added to the double bond. So that's the test. Next is phenol can be polymerized to form polyphenol. Draw one repeat unit of and they've they've written it in bold, so you just have to draw one repeat unit. So here's your molecule of phenol copied from above. So what happens in uh, in polymerization? What happens is that the double bond eventually it's going to break and molecules of phenol would bond with each other. So this molecule would repeat over and over again. Uh, the same molecule would be attached on the right and the same molecule would be attached on the left. So this would be your repeat unit of polyphenol. Part D of the question reads that isoprenol is a structural isomer of prenol. So this is a structural isomer of uh, prenol. It's a different molecule. The series of reactions shows how isoprenol can be used to form Q a sweet smelling liquid. So a series of reactions uh, are happening and you can see hydrogenation taking place and then uh, the alcohol getting oxidized to form carboxylic acid which then reacts with, with an alcohol again to form an ester. Q is probably an ester, it's a sweet smelling liquid. You have to give the name of N first. So we need to figure out what N is. Now to name this N, first figure out how many carbon atoms are in the longest chain. So that's, that's four carbon atoms. I'm going to ignore this carbon atom which is a branch. So there are four carbon atoms in a line. So that means it's, it's but, four carbon atoms in a line and an OH. So it's butanol and it's specifically butanol because the OH is on the first carbon atom. And then there's a branch. This is the first carbon atom. This is the second carbon atom. On the third carbon atom, there is a branch of one carbon atom. So it's a methyl branch. So three methyl on the third carbon atom. So the name of the molecule is 3-methyl butanol. The next part of the question is, isoprenol is a liquid. Nickel acts as a catalyst for reaction 1. Identify the type of cat catalysis shown by nickel in the reaction 1. This type of cat cat catalysis is known as heterogeneous catalysis because nickel has a different state compared to uh, as they've already told you, isoprenol is a liquid, nickel is a metal. So if the catalyst has a different state, uh, then that's known as heterogeneous catalysis. And then you're being asked to draw the structure, skeletal formula of Q and suggest one commercial use of Q. So we need to go back and have a look at how could Q be formed. So here you can see I've drawn this molecule P. This is my P reacting with ethanol, ethanol two carbon atoms and an OH. The functional group carboxylic acid and the OH are, uh, should be drawn in front of each other so that they react with each other and they are going to end up forming an ester. So what would happen when an ester is formed, uh, the OH is lost and the H is lost from the alcohol. So they would be gone. So let us uh, remove the H and OH, they are going to end up forming water and the carbon atom would then directly bond, the cereal bonder would directly bond with the oxygen in the alcohol. So the carboxylic acid, the H and OH are gone from the middle and this ester link cedal bond O and O is going to be formed. So here I have uh, neatly drawn what Q is going to look like. Uh, there is this ester functional group in the middle. And what is the commercial use of ester? It is used in food flavorings. It is used to make perfumes. These are these sweet smelling liquids. Now part E of the question reads that P can be produced as shown. So look over here, there is an alkene reacting with HCl. So the double bond, H gets bonded, Cl gets bonded to one side. So that is what is happening over here. Then the Cl gets substituted by a nucleophile, which is Cn in this case. And that gets hydrolyzed, the Cn changes into a carboxylic acid. Now the progress of reaction 1 can be monitored using infrared spectroscopy. One absorption that can be used to monitor the progress of the reaction is that the CCl at 730 centimeter. So the progress of this reaction, this reaction is happening. So infrared spectroscopy detects the presence of different bonds uh, by looking at the absorption of those bonds, the frequencies th that those bonds are absorbing when they vibrate. So CCL bond vibrates at 730 centimeters. So initially there was no CCL and then the CCL would be formed. So you would start seeing an absorption at 730 centimeters. The question is identify another absorption that can be used to monitor the progress of the reaction. In your answer you should refer to the specific bond and its corresponding absorption range in wave numbers. So one other thing, one other difference apart from the CCL bond between the two molecules is this carbon double bond carbon over here. This carbon double bond carbon is present 
So, initially there is going to be absorption over here this bond would be vibrating, but then when the product is formed the C double bond C is going to vanish and the absorption would go away as well. So, we are going to talk about the C double bond C. We can monitor the progress by looking at the C double bond C. So, I have uh, opened the data booklet and you can uh, you can see C double bond C over here. Uh, C double bond C over here 1500 to 1600 it is a weak unless conjugated there is going to be absorption at this range. So, the wave number at which the absorption would occur is 1500 to 1680 and this absorption would disappear when products are formed. So, you can you can see over here C del 1 C is present when the product is formed it is gone. So, this absorption would be, would be gone as well. Next part 2 is state the reagents needed for reaction 2. So, let us look at reaction 2. Reaction 2 is the C L a halogen getting substituted nucleophilic substitution is occurring with C n minus 1. So, the conditions that are needed for that is NaCN ethanolic and reflux. So, you can write that and you also need to name the type of reaction that occurs in reaction 3. So, have a look at reaction 3. Reaction 3 is hydrolysis. It is a reaction with water. Dilute acid is added. This C triple bond N decomposes and changes into a carboxylic acid. This carbon changes into a carboxylic acid. So, this part is hydrolysis. And part 4 is that the yield of reaction 1 is very low, explain why. So, let us uh, have a look at reaction 1. Now, why is the yield low? Because if you add HCl, then there are two carbons, they are double bonds. Now, the H could bond with this carbon atom and the Cl could bond with this other carbon atom. So, this that would result in the formation of this molecule, but another thing could happen and that is that the H might bond with this carbon atom and the Cl would bond with this carbon atom and that thing is more likely to happen that would be your major product because the H likes to bond with that carbon atom that is already bonded with more hydrogens. So, it is more likely that you get this molecule instead of this molecule it is more likely that the Cl is bonded to this carbon atom rather than this carbon atom according to Markovnikov's rule. So, that is what you are going to write in your explanation. So, this is what you are going to write that according to Markovnikov's rule H bonds with the carbon in C double bond C which is already bonded to more H atoms uh, because carbocation with more alkyne chains is more stable. Hence, uh, the product is less the product that is given in the reaction above is less likely to form. The H would prefer this carbon atom instead of this carbon atom and the Cl would prefer this carbon atom instead of this carbon atom. So, you are going to get uh, so the yield is going to be very very low.